Good morning. It is such a delight to be able to be here today, uh, to speak the truth of God's word, uh, to be together in community, even though it may be an online community or a listening community. It truly is good to be together as the family of God. Uh, last week, I was reading in the Wall Street Journal about a treasure hunt that has become nationwide. Uh, there are people all over the world searching for a treasure that's hidden somewhere in the Rocky Mountains. It's filled with gold and jewels. The search for this hidden treasure has become a hobby for some, an obsession for others, and for one individual, actually a fatal pursuit. The man behind the treasure is Forrest Fenn. He's an octogenarian millionaire, a self-taught archeologist, former U.S. fighter pilot, and author of his own self-published book called The Thrill of the Chase. Forrest Fenn claims to have hidden this million-dollar treasure in the Rocky Mountains, and his book is filled with clues that lead treasure hunters to the precise location of the box. No one knows where the treasure is hidden besides Forrest himself. He does tell everyone that it is above 5,000 feet. It is not in a graveyard or near a structure. He says that anyone, even an octogenarian, can get to the location. Scripture talks a lot about treasure. We see treasure as a theme weaved through many passages. Today, our scripture talks a great deal about earthly treasures. The first verse in our passage is Matthew 13, 44, and we'll end with verse 46. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all he had and bought it. These two short verses pack in two powerful parables. They're often told together because their meaning is so similar. The item they were searching for is considered so valuable to the person who found it that they went and they were willing to give up everything in order to obtain it. In the first parable, Jesus talks about a man of meager means now, treasure is somewhat fascinating to us. Uh, most of us have seen Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, many of us as children read Treasure Island. Uh, the well-known author James Patterson writes children's books on treasure hunting. Our VBS theme for this past summer was treasured. In Jesus' day, people took their treasures and hid them in fields. They would bury them as a safe spot for them. And if someone was to come across a treasure and to find it buried in a field, they weren't to touch it. If they touched it, they would then have to give it to the owner of the field. However, rabbinic law allowed someone who stumbled upon or came across a treasure buried in the ground to keep it if they were able to purchase the land. If they were able to purchase it, everything in the land would legally be theirs to keep. The man who found the treasure was probably a hired farmhand, a meager man working a day's job this man didn't wake up that morning and think, okay, I am gonna go out with my metal detector and I'm gonna search for treasure. He had no idea that in an instant, his life could be forever changed. In the second parable, the man is a merchant. He's out searching for pearls. In Jesus' day, pearls were of tremendous value. 
those who sold them, bought them, sold them, they had to travel near and far. Uh, they went to places like Sri Lanka to find the most beautiful pearls available. Their life was spent traveling, investing, searching, looking for the perfect pearls. Who knows how long or how far this merchant had traveled to find beautiful pearls, and he finds one of most significant value. Today, I have my pearls on. Uh, my husband, Trey, bought these for me for our 15th wedding anniversary. They really are a treasure to me. Uh, as a young girl growing up in the South, I longed to have a string of pearls of my very own. Uh, and there's just something wonderful about them, even the way that pearls are created. A mollusk gets an irritant inside of it, and that irritant becomes the pearl. It could take years, but the mollusk, as a, a defense mechanism against the irritant, covers it layer by layer by layer. And time goes on, and that irritant becomes covered and beautiful, completely changed and of great, great value. The man who was in the field, he didn't recognize treasure. He wasn't sure what it would be. The merchant man knew treasure and spent his life looking for it. The two men in our story are so different. One is rich and one is poor, but they have something alike as well. Both of them were willing to sell everything they had to obtain the treasure that was before them. These are the beneficiaries of the kingdom, different but alike. These are the people of God. Some go looking for answers and they seek and they seek and they seek and they spend their life looking and yearning to know more about the Lord. And others just stumble upon the Lord Jesus, uh, just falls into our laps. We pray that for the children that we baptize in our church. We pray that there will never be a day where Jesus Christ isn't real to them. Each of us beneficiaries of the kingdom coming to God in very, very different ways. There's no cookie cutter uh, image of someone in the kingdom of God. Each is unique, each is gifted, each has so much to offer, different but yet the same as children of God. As beneficiaries of the kingdom, we are called to put Christ first. He asks us to give everything that we have for him. He asks his disciples to follow him, to release everything and to follow him. And he asks that of us as well. C.S. Lewis puts it very, very well. We are still making mud pies in a slum because we don't believe in an offer of a holiday at the beach. Our problem is not that we love pleasure too much. Our problem is that we are too easily pleased. We settle for the cheap plastic imitation satisfactions, the broken toys of a world living in rebellion against God, when infinitely satisfying treasure is offered to us in Christ. Uh, there's a woman uh, by the name of Elizabeth Lynch. And Elizabeth became engaged to the love of her life. He was a Christian. Her family was not. Her family disowned her and forbid her many siblings never to speak to them again. Elizabeth and her husband married. Uh, they went on to, to start a church. They had four sons. Uh, they have seven grandchildren, uh, 14 great-grandchildren, and 12 
So far, great, great grandchildren. Elizabeth was asked to give up much. As a beneficiary of the kingdom of God, she gave for the Lord. Many of you know the story of Jim Elliot. On January 8, 1956, 28-year-old American missionary Jim Elliot was martyred, along with four missionary partners, his friends. He was survived by his wife, Elizabeth, and their 10-month-old daughter, Valerie. He was speared in the jungle while attempting to share the gospel with those who had never heard it. Jim was willing to sacrifice. As a beneficiary of the kingdom of God, he was willing to sacrifice for the Lord. One of his most famous quotes says it well. He is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. What is your story? Uh, what, is, what is God asking you to do? Does it feel at times that it would be impossible for you to do? Do you feel like you wouldn't be able to do what God is asking you to do? Lean in to what Jesus is asking of you. You are a beneficiary of the kingdom of God. You have a seat at the table. The only way you can relinquish control the way you can let things go to be able to sacrifice for him, to be able to serve him, is because there's a blessing that came first. Before we ever seek Jesus, he sought us. We are able to love because he first loved us. Some of us stumble upon God, but it's only because he first found us. The only way we're able to sacrifice pleasures of this world is because he sacrificed fully for us. We are beneficiaries of the kingdom of God because of what he accomplished on our behalf. By grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift from God not a result of work so that no one may boast. We are his. We are called to do good works for him. The works that are created for us to do were created before the foundation of the world so that we could walk in the Lord and serve him. Did anyone Google the thrill of the chase? Does anyone know the end of the story? Well, earlier this year, the New York Times reported that the treasure had been found. A 32-year-old medical student claims to have found the Romanesque box filled with treasure. It was under a canopy of stars in the lush forest vegetation of the Rocky Mountains and had not moved from the spot where I hid it more than 10 years ago. I do not know the person who found it but he found it in the precise spot that my book led him to. Forrest Fenn's word. But there's always more to a story. And unfortunately, depending on which way you go, um, this may be the most disappointing sermon illustration that you've ever heard. Some believe the story's real. Others believe that it's, it's a hoax. Fenn's estate is being sued and serious claims are being made against him that he was a con artist. Thousands of people have read The Thrill of the Chase and searched for hidden treasure that may or may not have been there. One lost his life in search of earthly treasure. Why chase the treasures of the world when you are a beneficiary of the kingdom of God? The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field and like a merchant in search of fine pearls. It's so valuable that those who find it are willing to give up everything they have to have it be their own. You are a beneficiary of the kingdom of God. 
God knows you and he sacrificed his son for you. Go forward. You are able to do what he is calling you to do. Go forward because of what Christ has done for you. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much that you call us to be yours. Lord, we seek you. You find us. Lord, you call us your own. Lord, help us not to be afraid to do what you are asking of us. Lord, help us to do what you are asking of us because of the great love you have for us in what you did on our behalf. Send us forward, Lord, in joy, giving you all that we have because we are yours, your beneficiaries. In Jesus' name. Amen.